Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna, and this is a podcast about knitting. Today is Thursday, August 9th, 2018. I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia in the U.S. Um, welcome to anyone who's new today. Thank you for joining me, and I hope there's something here that you will find interesting. And those who've come back to visit with me again, thanks so much. Let's um, go through what we'll have today. There will be uh, finished objects, some works in progress, some giveaway announcements of the winners, um, a little update on the other giveaways or make-alongs that we have going, our fiber-related children's literature book, and um, let me see, one little thing I wanted to show you, and um, can't remember the rest, so um, I'll have to look down at my notes. But let's go ahead and get started with the finished object. Um, the first thing that I have, um, last time I showed you these socks, I had completed one, so they're both finished now. These are my perfectly suited socks, um, which is just the name of the colorway. This is um, sock yarn from Twisted Limon, and the colorway was perfectly suited. So I made a pair of afterthought heel, um, wedge toe, two by two sh short cuff and just plain stockinette socks and um, they fit nicely. They This yarn feels really nice. Um, I have this much left so um, didn't wait and another little piece that I needed to cut so that I could get started in the same place. I like everything to match. So um, very happy with these socks and I will add them to the sock drawer. <clears throat> the next finished object that my, I have, and it's the last finished object that I have, <clears throat> is um, three dish claws and I can't show them to you but I'll put a picture here. If you're a follower on Instagram, I did post that picture because I'm following along with the Yarn Hoarders um, challenge this year. So I will put her um, information right here. If you are doing dish cloths, you can participate in that challenge on Instagram. And I wanted to do it all year, but I needed, I, I thought, mm, I've got several gifts. My mom asked for some, and I thought I'll make some for my aunt. As long as I'm doing that, I'll make a, a few for other gifts. And I am going to visit a friend um, in a few months, and I thought, oh, I'll make some for her. But what prompted me to actually do it was I needed something to pack um, the card that I bought her, and I don't even know why they sell cards that you really can't send through the mail, but this one is adorable, had some little birthday candles on the front. It was a really cute card, and I realized there's no way this goes through the mail. Um, so I decided I'd put it in a box, and I needed some padding, so I thought, make the dish cloths, and we'll pad it with that. So um, I made those three, and I stuffed them in the package and sent that off to her. She should be getting it today. So um, I hope I will finish um, the other ones that I have planned for gifts and maybe get a few stockpiled as gifts. Um, for works in progress, let's see. Um, the Sophie shawl I still haven't touched, um, and I feel really bad about that, but um, I will get to it and I will finish it. I'm at the halfway point. Um, I did start um, something new, though, and this was in my lovely project bag by Ziploc. Um, this, I keep it in this because I can squeeze the air out and stick it down in my other bag to take off to, uh, my grandson each morning. I, where I, um, start off my day each weekday. This, um, blanket I'm making at his request. I have previously, previously shown the baby blanket that I made for him, um, when he was born. And that one has really shown it's where it's uh, been washed well over 300 times and it's really falling apart but he still loves it and he loves it being soft and I showed him this yarn this is Universal Yarns Bella Chenille and um, it's not the same brand chenille yarn that I used for his other blanket but it is a chenille yarn like that was the stitch on that one was very open and I don't think that's helped it wear at all. So I decided while I was making those dish cloths, the pattern, oh, I didn't even tell you the name of the pattern. Um, I will put the name of the pattern down here. It's a revamped or revised granny's dish cloth, something like that. I will put it down here. But as I was doing it, I thought, I remember someone saying they made a blanket this way. 
I thought, well, how easy would that be? I already had two skeins of this that I'd had for a couple of years, so it's getting getting rid of something old in my stash. And so I am using, it's not the same pattern. I am using the corner to corner blanky pattern. And um, I probably have that pattern right here so that I can actually show it to you. Corner to corner blanky. And this was a free pattern. And it says from String, String Theory Yarn Shop. And um, I am using a pretty big needle here. I'm not going to be able to read this. I think it's an 11. It's chai goo, but you know, it's really thin black lines on silver. And I can't see anything anyway without my magnifier and a lamp. And so I can never read it, even though that's on a really big needle. But um, here's where I am. And I am getting near the end of the first skein. So I'm thinking two skeins isn't going to cut it. It's, it's, it did for the other blanket, but just because this is a different garter stitch with a little edge and a detail and um, these little holes for make, increasing. So I decided since I'm about halfway of my yarn and that's as wide as it would be that I, um, the other color that goes in his room matches the quilt that I made and, and am finishing still is navy blue with lime. So I ordered the same kind of yarn in navy blue. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I'm getting close on the first gain of green, I'm going to pick up the blue and so do the center part blue and when it gets close to where I want it, then I'll start the decreasing and do an equal amount of the blue and then finish off with the other skein of the green. So it'll have a diagonal blue stripe on it. And I did order two skeins of that and I won't use more than one in the center, I'm sure. And that I should have enough to go all around the edges um, with some maybe a little cro crochet stitch. I will say though, what I had started to do with this was make a crochet blanket. Um, and I got the idea from listening to Boston Jen on the Down Cellar Studio audio podcast. And she was making, and she's a prolific knitter and crocheter. She was making this blanket that had a free pattern. It was yarn spirations and it's called the hibernate blanket. So it's very simple. They said simple as can be. Um, there was a tutorial on the site to show you how to get it going. So I thought, okay, this is perfect because I can't, I can crochet one way, but I can't really follow a pattern. But I thought, hey, here's a, I watched it and I thought, okay, that's simple enough. And I tried to do it. I even had to order crochet hooks for it because I didn't have one large enough. So I ordered two that were kind of large and um, I can't do it. I'm just, I'm, I'm hopeless. When you do the chain, I, I, I can do the chain. I can single crochet, but I can't see where to put it. He's showing me, I see it, but I just twist it all over the place. So I just gave up and that's when I decided, hey, I'm just gonna make this like a dishcloth. And then I found the, that pattern and um, I'm perfectly happy, but I wish I would, had someone to hold my hand because even YouTube wasn't enough to get me going. But that's that's a work in progress and it's moving along really quickly. And I hope to get that blue yarn and um, finish it up. Um, he's excited to see it every morning and sits down and knits with me. Um, he has to yarn, he calls it yarn. Nana, I yarn with you. And he sits in my lap and four or five stitches and he's ready to get down. But he has done um, some stitches on here and we go through the little poem about um, in the front door and around the back and out the window. So we do that together. So that is called the corner to corner blanket, but I am also crocheting him a blanket. Also in a project bag by Ziploc. I shouldn't say Ziploc. This is a hefty project bag. I'm sorry. I misspoke the name of the maker. I like it when they have the real zipper. It's easier for me. So this blanket came about because um, this past winter in the car, when you get in the car and you have a toddler or baby, you can't put them in the car seat with their coat on because it's not safe. It, it doesn't tighten enough and they could come out somehow in a, in a collision. So we always have to take his coat off and we carried a fleece blanket in the car just to cover him up with so he wasn't, you know, cold when you first get in the car on those cold mornings. 
So I thought, I'm going to show, see if I can teach my daughter to crochet because that was the first thing I learned to do with yarn was to crochet a huge granny square. And I made three different afghans with that method. And um, I still remembered how to do it. And so I thought, I tried to teach her to knit and that didn't work. And um, so I thought she could do this and that didn't work either. So after it's sitting there for a really long time, I just thought, okay, I'm just gonna take it back and, and finish it up. So that this winter, we will have this for him. So the yarn that I'm using is an Uptown DK Colors. This is also by Universal Yarns. It's an anti-pilling, 100% acryl acrylic yarn. It's in the Denim Dreams color, which is 70311. And um, it's a variegated yarn. And I really love the light blue color in here. I don't know if you can tell me, it has kind of a little shine to it, which is, is kind of pretty. I'm gonna do three, three skeins. This is an extra skein, cause one, I just, I had four, and um, but I'm just gonna use three, just seeing what size it's getting to now. This is the third skein, so I've finished two whole skeins. And I'm just making a great big granny square. And it's about this big now. So it has these variegated colors. And I just, it seemed like just nice because being acrylic, we can just throw it in the washing machine in the dryer or something that goes in the car. It's usually nice to have something that can be thrown in the washer and dryer easily. So that's my next work in progress. It's just a large granny square blanket. The last work in progress that I have, I showed last time and they were a work in progress then. They're my Sum Sum Summertime Socks, which is a... Um, uh, Vesper Sock Yarn by Knitterly Things, and I'm keeping it in this bag by um, Whims Whimsical, Whimsy Stitches. I can't read it. It's My eyes, just, I can't see it to, to read it. I think it's Whimsy Stitches, but it could be Whimsical. I just can't read it. So that was a, it's a little sock bag that has the clear, which I love. And um, I think I misspoke last time. I said I keep the balls of yarn in here while I'm knitting. I don't keep them, the balls of yarn inside the sock while I'm knitting, just while I'm storing it in the bag. So I'm sorry if you thought that, because that would be kind of weird to have it in there, just the weight. But where I am now is I have finished the heel flaps and finished all the um, decreases for the gusset, and I'm working down the foot. I think I have maybe three and a half to four inches worked down, so I'll need to do a bit more and then um, close up the toes. I am thinking about making these for my daughter instead. Um, I've tried them on and they fit, but um, I think they, she's smaller than I am and has a shorter foot. I think they might fit her better. She wouldn't have needed this. I could have done an afterthought heel for her because she has flat feet and um, doesn't need the extra space, but this still fits very well on her. I've made her several socks that have this. This yarn, I'm finding it to be kind of splitty. And um, I think that even though I did 72 stitches, I probably should have done a 1.5 needle and maybe fewer stitches because they're just really tight. This is why, it, really, they're gonna last because it's, their gauge is tight and it, they're really sturdy feeling. But I'm not sure, I think she'd probably be more comfortable in them. The only problem is, she always forgets and throws them in the dryer. So I don't know. Maybe they're so bright and she won't. This is the yarn that I'm using. Vesper Sock Yarn by Knitterly Things. And then I also had um, a 50 gram mini in the gin bottle blue colorway. And the stripes is called Some Some Summertime, which is where I got my name. I'm very creative that way. I just take the um, name of the colorway and that becomes the name of my project. So... Um, that's all I'm working on. I have other things I should be working on and lots of things that I want to be working on and get cast on, but I am restraining myself. The last two weeks since I talked with you, um, I've spent more time sewing. And if you are a follower, you might have gotten something up in your feed, um, a project bag tutorial that I did finished yesterday. And that's what's um, take it, cut into my knitting time quite a bit. It's taken a while to... 
um, keep perfecting exactly how I wanted to have this bag so that it would be, I hoped, kind of easy to sew. It's an easy project bag. And um, granted, I've made it several times, but if I have everything cut out and prepped, and I usually do that, I will um, cut out four or five things at a time and have all the pieces cut and put into a bag. And if, if I have done that and I sit down to sew, two hours, I'm done. And that is about half the time it takes me to make a three zipper bag. So um, same thing with the, everything prepared. So it's, it's a, a pretty fast little bag. Um, if you're a brand new sewer, I think, you know, as long as you can operate your machine and cut fabric, I think that you could do it. It's, it's not anything, it's everything's straight line that you cut, everything's a straight line that you sew. So you don't have to do anything fancy to do that. And with the options, um, you can just buy ribbon for the drawstring or cording for the drawstring. And you can um, leave the pocket out if you don't want a pocket inside. And leave the handle off because you don't really have to have a handle. That would really make it easier. I just finished one last night um, that I didn't have to in, done in time for the uh, tutorial. But this is one that... Uh, I have a lot of hydrangea fabric because when I was um, working on um, my hydrangea bag project, I ordered several different ones to see which one I liked the best. And I loved them all, but ultimately went with one. And um, this one, gorgeous hydrangeas. And I put a larger pocket inside of it because I wanted an entire flower on it. So on the pocket, I sewed around the three sides like you do, but I also um, made an additional stitching line about mm, inch and a half or so in because this was a large pocket and that leaves a a slot that you could put a crochet hook in or you could put a pencil in or pen and and then something else on the other side and this has a green um like a light color green um i can't think seafoam green maybe canvas bottom and I did purple on the inside and I used a grow grain ribbon and a little cord lock or cord stop I can't remember what they're called to um, cinch it up and I did put a handle on it so when you cinch it you have a nice little drawstring bag and your project doesn't get caught in a zipper and uh, these stand up by themselves as well so this is the tutorial and if you want to make a project bag it's it's probably I think a, a pretty easy one um, all drawstring bags I think are, are easier and um, there are lots and lots of tutorials so if you don't like the way mine is because I have a casing at the top there's different ways to do your cording um, check out YouTube because there's lots of different um, tutorials there I haven't really watched any but um, because I knew how to put together uh, a drawstring bag like four or five different ways I didn't really think I needed to follow along anybody else's but um, I, they all look pretty easy and some people's are only six minutes long you don't have to watch for an hour sorry I give uh, fairly detailed directions because that's just my nature <laughs> um, so that tutorial's taken a lot of my time so most of my time has been sewing this past uh, two-week period let's see I want to talk about some prizes that we have because we had a lot of giveaways going on first of all let me grab it and this will be a bit on the crinkly side and oh there it is okay so this was a bag by awesome granny and this was a giveaway we were doing on Instagram and it is a firefly bag with a handle it's a large size project bag it's a wonderful bag it's beautiful and it's gonna kill me to send it off because it's so pretty I, I absolutely love it and I decided I wanted to add something to that giveaway. So I dyed some mini skeins of yarn based on colors in the bag. So I have the dark blue for this and then a lighter blue for here. And then there's this color, which, um, or no, maybe I did this color blue, sorry, that color blue. And then the green that's at the bottom and there's pink in the flowers. And then the white is, which I didn't die, it's just natural, are the fireflies. So I have this to go along with it and also a little set of stitch markers which have a dragonfly and I think then a five, four or five of the little ring beaded stitch 
markers. So this prize from Instagram is going out to L-I-N-B-O-1-1-5-1. And if you would please send me um, an email to my Gmail account, which is in a pickle knitting at gmail.com. Let me know your, your full name and your mailing address. I will get this mailed right out to you. So I hope you're watching the podcast. I will also um, put this on Instagram. I will notify um, that there was a winner so everyone can see because not everyone who uh, did the Instagram may be a follower of the podcast. So I am going to announce that on Instagram as well when, when I finish here. And I better write myself a note. Put a big star there. Um, the other thing I feel so bad, I forgot to tell everyone, and, but it's still going on. So if you weren't the winner, and we had um, 826 comments, so the numbers I put in were 1 through 826, and the winner was number 145, which is, I think, Linbo1151. Um, what was I even saying? Oh, so if you weren't a winner, you can still save 15% off of one of Darlene's gorgeous bags and to do that you go to awesome granny's Etsy shop and Put in the code pickle 15 and I'll put that right here and you'll save 15% Which is a great deal and very very generous of her and she has so many gorgeous bags I know you'll find one that you love and if that was the one you loved then you could get 15% off So that's our very first winner Congratulations, and the next one is for this gorgeous yarn by Camel City Dye Works, and this was in the Jack Frost color, colorway, and it is a uh, Stellina yarn. It has sparkle in it. Ooh, that showed up right there. Isn't that gorgeous silver Stellina with the blues? Is This is a beautiful skein of yarn. So this, um, thank you all for trying to find something on our website. Some of you were very creative um, looking at different colorways um, that have already been sold. And thank you, um, all of your entries counted. And we had 69 um, uh, different entries on that giveaway. And so I went two through 69 and the winner was number 52, Family Diva. So if you will get in contact with me through Ravelry, send me a private message on Ravelry and I will get this off in the mail to you. Family Diva. Congratulations. Gorgeous skein of yarn. I think that'll, that'll make so many pretty things. And then next, um, I'm going to have to pause because I didn't put the prize here. Okay, got that prize now. And our sock winner this time, the numbers were, we started at 755 and went through 877. And the winner is number 783, Joe 9919. And what Joe, you've won, is the skein of Javel, which is a sock yarn that also comes with a little skein of reinforcing thread. If you've got somebody particularly hard on their socks, this is a good yarn. It has lots of pretty shades of green and blue, and they show you what your so uh, vanilla sock might look like. So if you will get hold of me, Joe, at... Um, on Ravelry, I will get that off in the mail to you. So those are our three winners. Congratulations to you all. And now let's um, recap a, a bit about the other make-alongs that we have. And one is the Oldies make-along. I did say it was going to end August 17th, but it will end a few days after that because I'm sure I won't podcast by then. So it'll be the podcast date after the 17th, which probably be um, a little bit into the next week. So those of you who are trying to finish up old things, use up old stash, either it could be sewing or weaving or um, spinning, knitting, crocheting, anything with that old pattern that you've had for a long time or a kit or some yarn that's just been languishing, um, get those things done. And it'll probably, I, I guess, try to aim for maybe the 21st, 22nd of August to be done. So you've got a little bit more time left, a couple weeks. And our shawl along, which um, I gave out a prize last time, I'm going to go roughly every two months um, and do that again. So any of you knitting shawls, enter them in the finished object thread and, and also in the chatter thread because we'd love to hear about, well, even in the finished object it thread. Tell us your pattern. Tell us your yarn that you use. So that answers a lot of questions that people have um, about your shawl. 
um, along with your picture. And the next one will be around the 20th of September. So just to give yourself a, a little bit of a guide there as to when you want to maybe be pushing to finish up there. That'll be our next um and I don't have a prize pick yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be um, a drawstring bag. And our next sock, um, time we draw for the, from the sock will be not the next podcast, but the one after that, which will be into September someplace. So keep posting your socks. Remember, if you're a first-time sock knitter and that's your first pair of socks, post it twice. Give yourself two entries in the finished object thread. And if you're doing any kind of stripey socks, post those twice too. And, um, okay, so that's all for the make-alongs, except last time I said, oh, I'm going to start a new make-along, and then I never told you about it. I tend to do this an awful lot, and I'm sorry, I even make notes and still do it. The make-along that I wanted to start was a baby make-along. Anything you might make for a baby. Because, as you know, I'm going to be taking that class on making um, Elizabeth Zimmerman's uh, baby surprise jacket. My class doesn't start until next Thursday. A week from today is the first um, time that we meet. So I haven't done anything other than the cast on because that's all that uh, we were given directions to do so far. Um, and so I thought, hey, you know, we can all just knit along. And I'm going to make this go for three months because that's when my class, it's supposed to take three months. So I'll, I'll put this out three months. Um, and I will, so, so I'll start it next week, mid-August, September, October, all of, well, August to September, September, so no mid-November. So anything you're making for baby, um, booties, hats, sweaters, blankets, um, anything at all, Put your finished objects in the finished object thread, and I will I will get those threads in there today. So I'll get a chatter and a finished object thread for anything you're making for baby. And if you've got a whip going, that that's fine. Um, doesn't matter. So that covers all of our make-alongs. I just need to make sure that I have a note here to start that um, thread for you. So I guess the next thing that I have would be our children's book today. Now this book was recommended to me. Um, Deborah from Meanwhile at the Castle podcast said that her daughter had gone to the library and found this book and so she recommended it to me. I'd never heard of it and I ordered it on Amazon and it came and um, I don't know what it is with the, the delivery people. This was USPS and it was left on my front porch at a time um, after five so that was after I think I'd already collected our mail it came after that was left on the front porch no ring of the doorbell I was here on a, a day we'd had rain for probably a week it wasn't raining probably at the time it was dropped off but it started raining during the night it sat on the porch all night I came home from dropping my grandson or picking my grandson up or something in the morning I see a box on the porch and um, the box was damp. Most of the things inside the box weren't damaged, but the book, of course, water and books, they don't go together. It had, um, all, the, all the pages were warped. It, and this one even looks a tiny bit um, warped itself, but that one was really warped. So I contacted them and I sent it right back and they, they did send me a, a replacement copy, which they're very good about that. Um, but they used to be really good about making sure that they were in plastic. I don't know why you'd not put something around the box if you're leaving it in rainy weather. I, I don't have a covered front porch, so it was wet. The box was wet. So anyway, this book is called Cat Knit, written and illustrated by Jacob Grant. And this is a very short book, um, and but it's a cute little book because the cat has his little owner and he just loves her. But one day she goes to the store and brings home somebody new and he loves yarn. Um, it's a, his new friend. He likes to, of course, play with her as kitties would do. He does all sorts of things with yarn and that's become his really great friend. And then one day the girl wanted to play with the yarn. And guess what she did? She started knitting and knit him up a sweater. So I won't tell you the rest, but it's a really cute, uh, rather short book uh, with very large print. So your um, early readers might enjoy this too. If it had been read to an early reader once or twice, um, 
this would be an approachable book for them. There are, you know, a couple of words that would be more difficult, but if you've had it read to you a couple of times, I think it's a very approachable little book, but a cute little story, Cat Knit. I did want to mention, I don't know how well you can see or if it's in the camera or not, but the shawl that I have out today, this is a shawl that um, was done as a mystery knit along and it is called Inner Smile. And it's the um, designer is Christina and I don't know how to pronounce her last name so I'm gonna put her name up here. And she is a knit designer and she lives um, in Europe, I've forgotten quite where, where, where but she um, is trilingual, I believe, and um, ran a beautiful um, knit along for this. She's done others as well. This I knit with black trillium gradient pack in one of their sock bases, um, and it is in the garnet colorway, so it had five colors. I did the small size and I wish I had done the large size because I had enough yarn for the large size and um, it wasn't huge. But at the time I remember thinking I might not have enough yarn and I didn't want to have to order another set. So um, I did do the small one. So it's more of a shawlette, but it has um, lots of short rows and then these um, crescent shaped spaces that have different lace patterns. So each clue in the mystery knit along had um, a different lace pattern that you did in the short rows and it was it was a fun knit along and uh, mystery knit along and now the pattern is available um, on Ravelry so you don't have to do it as a mystery. So um, that is the shawl. I don't I usually forget to tell you that. And oh I had one other thing I wanted to show you. This was something I had ordered and it's um, here is the maker. So it's Katrinkles, problem. And what it is, is two different gauge rulers. And I have trouble with gauge swatches and keeping it still. And I thought, you know what? I think this would be so much easier because I could sit it down and actually um, keep, maybe keep it still. And so there are two in here, and I haven't taken them out of the packaging yet. It came very nicely packaged so it wouldn't break with cardboard on the back and tied up very nicely and in a padded um, envelope. So um, I thought this was nice, and I, I liked getting a smaller one as well. So um, just wanted to show that to you as something that you might also find useful when doing gauge swatches. So I think think that's everything that I had today and um, I hope that you in, are enjoying your knitting or crafting or making time and um, please if you're a sewer and want to learn how to make a, a different kind of project bag a really simple one check out that tutorial that I put up yesterday thanks so much and see you later bye bye